Welcome to West Raven Castle, host of the annual Castle Break Games. You have been chosen to represent your kingdom in this year's games, where you will be competing against other warriors to see who can be the first to unlock Dragon's Tower and freeing Cinder, who is locked inside. In order to be the first to accomplish this feat and win the game, you will need three keys to unlock the tower's three gates. So how do you get your keys? Well, that's easy if you're good. Your objective is to complete a series of quests by collecting goods, using your tools and weapons, and harnessing your magical powers. For each quest you complete, you'll be rewarded in coin. The more difficult the quest, the higher the reward. Be the first to collect all six coins, have them forged into keys, unlock the gates of Dragon's Tower, and you will earn the title of this year's champion. This is a race to see which warrior can outmaneuver and outwit their opponents, searching, bartering, stealing. Make one wrong move, one wrong decision, and your games will likely end in defeat. All right, let's go ahead and set up our Castle Break game. First, we're going to take the West Raven Castle board, of course, place it in the center of the table. You're then going to take the 12-sided dragon die. This is the larger die that has the locks on it, and you're going to place it in the center of Dragon's Tower. Now, keep in mind, you are only going to be using the dragon die towards the end of the game. You're then going to take your 10-sided movement die, and we're going to place that in the center of the board, but I want you to see that it only has three, six, and nine on here. So if a player chooses to use the die to move, they will only be moving in three, six, or nine. After that, each player is going to select their character they would like to play. Now keep in mind that there is no difference in powers between the characters. It's just more of a color and fun thing. However, you will uh, take a reference card for your character, which is very important during the game. And the reason being is it shows you the different actions that you can play on each of your turn. And on the back, it also shows you a list of all the items that are hidden within the castle and what category they fall in, okay? So you're gonna hang on to that because I've chosen Saphir. I'm gonna grab my green pawn and I'm just going to suggest that Marie, who's gonna be playing with me today, has chosen Thane, which is the brown pawn. Once everybody has done that, we are going to start by dealing out your quest cards. Now remember, the objective of the game is to complete as many quests as you can and collect coins based on the difficulty of each quest. To begin the game, we are gonna deal out three cards to each player at the board, okay? However, throughout the game, the key rule is you can never have more than two of these in your possession at any time. So I am going to so look at my cards and I'm gonna say, all right, I think I'm gonna take this one here and I think this one sounds good. So I'm going to discard one of my quests I am then going to take my other quest that I am going to begin by working on, and I am going to place them in these card holders here. And this really just allows me to follow my quests along throughout the game. Makes it much easier for you. Now that each of the players have their two quests that they're gonna begin the game with, we're gonna deal out our object cards. Now there are three types of object cards. There are tools and weapons and trade goods, and these are items that we are going to be looking throughout the castle for to complete our quests. And then there are power cards, and the power cards are what we are going to use to either speed up our play, move around the castle more quickly, or to slow our opponents down. So to begin the game, we are going to deal out three tools and weapons to each player. We are going to deal out three power cards to each player. Oh, there's some mixed up in here. Two, three, three. And we are going to deal four trade good cards to each player. One. Now, in a two-player game, which is what we are doing the example with today, is each player will get one additional trade good card. Okay? Now, one of the key rules of the game is that you can never have more than six cards in your hand at any given time. Well, I was dealt 12 cards, or I was actually dealt, I'm sorry, 11 cards. So I have got to get rid of five cards that are in my hand. Now, only at the beginning of the game, I must keep all three of my power cards in my hand. Okay, So I'm going to take these, I'm going to put them to the side just for a second. Now, any cards that are in my hand are considered protected. All of the cards that I'm going to use to complete quests must come from this hand, and my protected cards cannot be stolen or bartered for throughout the entire game. So you have to use a lot of strategy in what you're going to keep, 
and what you were going to expose for other players to take from you, okay? So I'm gonna look at my quests and I'm gonna say, okay, I need this card and I think I'm going to need that and I'm gonna definitely need that, okay? So now I am left with five cards. What I am gonna do with these cards now is lay them in front of me and these cards are now exposed for other players at the table, again, to either barter for or trade for. This is now my starting hand. And again, I'm going to need to have three of my power cards and then three object cards alongside of it. And this is how I will begin. West Raven Castle is made up of 15 total rooms of differing color. You're going to see gray rooms and you're going to see tan rooms. And the reason for this is if I end my turn in the stables, at the end of each turn, I'm going to draw a card that is represented by the color room that I am in. So if I land in the stables, I am going to take a tools and weapons card. If I wind up at the end of my turn in the kitchen, I'm going to take a trade good card. And if I'm anywhere else on the board, any of the paths or any of the stairways, I am going to select a power card at the end of my turn. Now, in terms of moving throughout the castle, we'll learn more about how you can do that when we get to the action section. But for this part, I want to explain the tunnels and the tower rooms. You will notice that there are spaces at the edge of the wall that are highlighted in blue. These are the tunnel entrances and exits. At any point in time during the game, you can go from in, into any tunnel entrance and come out at any tunnel exit on the other side. So in this example, we're gonna say that I chose to roll my movement die, I got a six. I'm going to roll in one, two. I can come out anywhere I want to and complete my roll three, four, five. I've made it to the chapel in one move. So remember, blue to blue is very important. In the tower rooms, you will notice that the entrances on the outside of the wall are depicted by purple lights. So you're going to move purple to purple at any point in time you are up here. So if I end in staff quarters, or if I'm in the staff quarters, and I need to get across the tower or across the castle to the dungeon, I simply will roll my movement die, use any of my actions, and in one move, I can now move over to the dungeon. So remember, blue to blue, okay, and purple to purple allows you to move much more quickly throughout the castle. In the center of the board, you're going to notice two spaces. The first is the courtyard. The courtyard is where you are going to go to to collect quests. So at any point in time during the game, I'm going to move, and if I need a quest, I'm going to move to the courtyard. I will then, as an action, draw two new quest cards, okay? Now we know I can only have two in my possession at any given time, so I'm going to look at my two quest cards, decide if they are better or worse than what I have. I may choose to switch one, okay? and take the others and discard them. And this is a very, very important strategy if you get stuck not being able to complete a quest, head back to the courtyard. Okay? And then in the inside, which is where we have the dragon die, you are going to see this is Dragon's Tower. This is where Cinder is locked away and ultimately where you need to be to free her. All right, it's time to start playing Castle Break. On your turn, you are going to get to play up to two actions in any order that you would like. Now, if you look at your reference card, you will see all the, the actions that are listed here, but you can never play any single action more than once, and I'll show you that as we go through, okay? So to begin, I can play a power card. So if I go to my hand, I might say, I want to play the switch, and I'm gonna play the switch with Marie. In this case, with the switch, I would move to Marie's position, Marie would move to my room. It is an advantage for me, a disadvantage to her, okay? Now, I can no longer play another power card on my turn, okay? Again, I can only play any action one time, but I can play them in any order, okay? The next I can do is barter with the player. So I can look at my quest and say, boy, I really need um, a hunting tool. So I'm going to say, Marie, I am going to barter with you and I am going to take your slingshot. I am then going to pick up the card, I am going to count my cards, and if I have more than six, I must first expose a card. After I do that, Marie is then going to say, great, I would love to have your jewelry. She is going to take my jewelry, place it in her hand, and decide if she has to expose any cards. You can also swap with yourself, and the idea of swapping with yourself is remember, I can only play cards that are in my hand to complete a quest. So let's say I needed a swinging weapon, and the only one that I have is sitting here exposed. I can say I would like to swap with myself, 
I am going to pick up the swinging weapon. If I have more than six cards now, I would then expose one of the cards that I have. I can also use the movement die. And once again, this is a 10 sided die with three, six and nine. And that is the only way you can move. So I can roll the die. I now got a nine and I can move up the stairs here. And now I am in the potions room. Put this here just for the time being. I can also collect quest cards. So at any point in time that I get back to the courtyard, again, I'm going to draw two quest cards. I have to get down to two before it ends. Now, the one note about landing in the courtyard is at the end of your turn, you will not draw any additional cards because you have used collecting two quests as an action, okay? You can also complete a quest or part of it. As we mentioned before, we're gonna take a quest we are going to either complete it or complete it in part. That does count as an action. And the only time you will use this is at the end of the game. Once you have your six coins, you are going to take them to the fire pit, in which case you are going to forge them into three keys, which is considered an action. When you are ready to solve a quest, you of course are first going to announce, I'm going to solve a quest. You're going to hand the card, your quest, to the player to your right to read out loud. And this one says, a gift for the king. Collect one jewelry and one food item and take them to the throne room. So we'll pretend I'm in the throne room. I have a jewelry and I have a food. I have completed this quest, in which case I am going to be rewarded with one West Raven coin. I'm placing my coins here on the slots in front of my space. And this allows everybody to see how well everyone is doing. I am now at five coins with this. Now, at the end of your quest, or after completing a quest, you're not only going to get a coin, you're going to be given the opportunity to reload your satchel. Your satchel is your hand, okay? So I am going to draw one card from each of the three piles. When I am done, I've got to get down to six cards and expose any additional above that in front of me for play. Now, there is one exception to this. When you get to your sixth coin, Okay, which means your coins are complete and now your objective is to forge your keys and get into Dragon's Tower. You do not re reload your satchel. You would simply take a card that matches the room you are in. So I would take a trade good card here. I don't need it, I expose it. Three points and the two pointers are a little bit more difficult and each of them have two steps within. So if I take my a two coin quest and it says collect one swinging weapon and take it to the soldier's barracks. Okay, so what I would do is I would have a swinging weapon, I would be in the soldier's barracks, just pretend I can't use this normally, but I'll pretend I'm using this. And then what happens because I've only completed part of it, I am actually going to take that quest, I'm going to lay it down exposed in front of me along with any items that I use to complete that first part. This gives the other opponents uh, the idea that I am working on this quest. The other piece of this is to know is that this card that has now been played towards a quest does not count against the six maximum card in my hand. So I have just gotten to six coins. That means it is now my job to get to the fire pits, any one of them in the, towards the center of the castle and have my coins forged into keys. So let's play this through. I am done. It is still my turn. I have chosen to play my fairy dust card. Okay. My fairy dust card takes me automatically. I can go anywhere on the board. I am going to head to one of the fire pits. That is one action. On my second action, I am going to turn in my six coins and I am going to exchange them with three keys, which fit, fits over nicely in the same space. And now my goal is to get to Dragon's Tower to see if my keys fit the locks to unlock the gates. So it is the end of my turn. It is now back to my turn. I'm only three away. I'm gonna roll the movement die. It is gonna get me into the entrance to Dragon's Tower. Now, once I am here, I can no longer play any cards, nor can any of my opponents play any cards against me. Okay. Once I get here and it becomes my turn, the only action that I have at that point in time is to roll the dragon die to see if my first key fits into the first lock. Okay. I roll the die. If it comes up red, it means that I did not fit the correct key into the correct lock. 
my turn ends, it then goes around to the other players. Okay? If I roll the key and I got a green, which is an open lock, I advance to the next gate and continue my turn. I roll again, I get another green, I advance, and so on. Note that this 12-sided die has eight unlock and has four lock. So the advantage or the, the probability suggests you will get the unlock each time, but any time that you do get the red, it does slow you down, allowing the other warriors to catch up and perhaps free the dragon. Once you get your third green and you unlock the towers, you are named champion, you have freed Cinder, and you ride her to the glory. Welcome everybody to West Raven Castle. We hope you have a great time playing the game and appreciate any feedback you have in terms of rules clarifications, in terms of changes for our expansion pack, which is coming out soon, our expansion game, which is coming out soon. But once again, thank you so much for taking part in Castle Break.